Death in a Dark Mirror by John Macklin. Read by Heather Ordover. Max Hellier was never able to explain exactly what it was that woke him from his normally deep sleep. He could usually sleep through any disturbance. The room was pitch black, and although there was no light of any sort from the window, a faint bluish glimmer permeated the gloom. It was a weird, pulsating reflection of light, unlike any Hellier had ever seen. Then he noticed that the light was surrounding the reflection of the bedroom door in the mirror on the opposite wall. But it was something else that almost made his heart stop beating. For although he could see nobody beside him in the bed, a quick glance to the side showed a definite indentation of the pillow and the outline of a body beneath the blankets. Even worse, there was a sudden, intense coldness beside him, almost as if he were lying beside a corpse. He glanced in the mirror again and stifled a scream of horror. Hellier couldn't see himself reflected in the dark mirror, but there was another man lying there. A burly, bearded, handsome man with a swarthy complexion. And at that instant, Hellier could hear the man's heavy breathing. Then, still in the mirror, he saw the bedroom door open slowly and a woman peer in. Her eyes were fixed on the figure of the bearded man on the bed. Hellier watched as she crept up to the man with a horrible feline stealth and gripped the sleeper's throat with her long, bony fingers. He stared silently at the mirror as she squeezed the last breath of life from the hefty man. Then suddenly, the hideous drama ended. The picture faded. And Hellier was once more alone in the room. Badly shaken by this experience, Hellier wished he had stayed somewhere else. He had disliked the room in the inn in Munich as soon as he saw it, especially the tall mirror that overshadowed the room, reflecting every movement, every tiny disturbance. Hellier, like many people, never slept on the left side of his bed, and now, as he sat shivering in the huge bed staring at the empty mirror, he was grateful for his habit of sleeping on the right. He sank, thankfully, back into the pillows and tried to blot the dreadful vision of murder from his mind. In the morning, he was not sure that he had either dreamed the incident or else that his tired brain had run riot. He would have left the inn that very day, except that he met an old army buddy walking through Munich. Franz Braun was down on his luck. His heart had always been in painting, but Hillier knew that he had little talent. Braun had no job, no money, and that very morning had been evicted from his lodgings. Hellier offered Brown a meal at the inn and a night's lodging, not only out of friendship. Hellier wanted to see if Brown too would see the strange scene in the mirror. It turned out that now, in 1952, Brown had changed little from his war days. He wined and dined lavishly on Hellier's money and spent the whole evening flirting with the barmaid. Hellier had already gone up to the room when Brown came bustling in. She had to get back to work, he told Hellier, so we may as well turn in for the night. Hellier nodded. Brown said, The girl warned me not to sleep on the left side of the bed. I wonder why. Hellier had not told Brown about the apparitions in the mirror, but Brown was skeptical anyway about supernatural experiences. They settled down to sleep, 
brown on the left side of the bed. It was hours later when Hellier woke to find that the room was deadly cold, and in the mirror at the foot of the bed, the bedroom glowed again with that ghostly light. He stared at the reflection. There was no sign of himself or Brown in the mirror, but the form of the heavy, dark-skinned man was once more lying on the left-hand side. Hellier turned to look at the form beside him, but the face on the pillow was that of Franz Brown. Hellier looked back to the mirror, and just as it had on the previous night, the door in the mirror opened slowly. The same gaunt, marble-like face peered in, and with brutish determination, the figure crept towards the bed, its face contorted with malice. The cruel white fingers settled once more on the throat beneath the man's bushy beard. Hellier watched, fascinated, as the woman's hands clasped tighter and tighter. Then, as the shuddering form in the mirror grew still, both figures vanished. Braun had not stirred at all during the drama, but now Hellier turned to his friend and shook him. Brown could not be roused. Alarmed, Hellier snapped on the light, and then he let out a cry of sheer terror. Brown was dead. On his throat were two red marks slowly fading from sight. Hellier's scream roused everybody. The doctor who was called attributed Brown's death to heart failure, but Hellier knew that Brown had been as healthy as a young horse. The next day, he questioned the barmaid, who had warned Brown about sleeping on the left-hand side of the bed. The girl looked at him uncertainly before saying, I was right to warn him, Herr Hellier. The last few people who slept on the left side of that bed died in exactly the same way. (laughs) 